So is it is it plausible? Do you think that there's large swathes of of Russian population who who fundamentally believe that Ukraine is a Nazi state that was trying to invade Russia? Well, that's very difficult to measure. But the latest data that I know of, uh, surveys that were done in Russia using a methodology that allows people to say the truth without being identifiable, um, about 50 percent of the Russian public um, believe that to be the case. And yes, they support Putin. Propaganda when you're on the outside always seems a bit naff, a bit obvious and a bit unconvincing. But it must be, is it very different when you're kind of immersed in it, when it's part of your, your, the, daily, the daily air you breathe? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the information environment we live in determines, by, you know, in large part what we believe. And there is a good reason for that. And that is that, you know, most of us, when we talk to our friends or colleagues, are expecting to be told the truth. And so we have learned over our lifetimes that most things we hear are truthful. And in our daily lives, there are. Now, the problem is that, of course, you know, manipulative politicians can exploit that by immersing the population in disinformation. And then, yeah, people have little choice but to believe that unless they step outside the bubble. So is it, is it plausible, do you think, that there's large swathes of, of Russian population... Who, who fundamentally believe that Ukraine is a Nazi state that was trying to invade Russia? Well, that's very difficult to measure. But the latest data that I know of, uh, surveys that were done in Russia using a methodology that allows people to say the truth without being identifiable, um, about 50% of the Russian public um, believe that to be the case. And yes, they support Putin. Around 50% is the best estimate I've read. Is there something also in how autocratic leaders are kind of experts at the double down? Like you, the, the thing you said that most people expect people around them to tell them the truth. But I also think we have an expectation that if we raise information that contrasts with a story we're given, people will take heed of it, they'll respond, they'll change, they'll, they'll try and offer nuance. Whereas a dictator effectively not only just denies that, but probably doubles down on the original misinformation. Well, either that or what's even more pernicious, they just change the story. So, for example, when the Malaysian airliner was shot down by uh, Russian affiliated forces uh, some years ago, um, the Russians initially, you know, claimed that it was shot down by a Ukrainian fighter jet. Then they said that the plane was uh, t took off from Amsterdam being full of dead bodies. Then they claimed, you know, that the pilot committed suicide. And they changed the story like, like every couple of hours and came up with a different version of reality. And so the sum total of all of that is to create so much confusion that the public ends up thinking, well, you'll never know what the truth is. I don't have to believe anything. And that, of course, for an autocrat is precisely what they would want to achieve because then people become pliable and will go with whatever uh, they're being told to do. And how, do we how, do, how is this challengeable? Because um, media, you know, with many faults in, in Western countries, has the ability to at least theoretically be, be uh, uh, able to do this. How do you do it in, a, in a, what amounts to a closed media environment like Russia? Oh, well, it's much more difficult, of course, in a closed media environment. The best you can do is to try and enable people to access other information sources. And, um, you know, that means explaining to them how they can bypass censorship on the Internet uh, that means making content available in Russian that they can access easily uh, wherever possible. I mean, that's about the best that you can do in a closed system. And just finally, Stephen, is there also the, sort of the, the human tendency to want to believe in your own country, to want to believe that, you are, that your country is doing the right thing, to want to believe that you're not... So there is something that, whatever the facts of the matter might be, people have this sort of inherent desire to be told things they want to believe anyway. Well, absolutely. And we call that motivated cognition. And there's a lot of that 
of course, going on with uh, political discourse. People want to believe what they want to be true, whether it's relating to Brexit, for example, or to the Ukraine war. Um, however, even in those cases, we have shown experimentally in, in the laboratory that it is possible to correct people's misconceptions, provided you can get their attention. And that, of course, is the really crucial part that you have to be able to get through to people and for them to be able to listen. Uh, but once they do, if they do, then they are receptive to corrective messages, by and large, at least partially. And that's interesting. And whether those corrective messages in Russia will ever get there is, is the problem, as you suggested. Great to speak that's to you, Stephen. Big question. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us this morning. That's Stephen Lewandowski. He's a professor of cognitive psychology there.